Hi, I'm Laura Zervis, and I'm here today to present on behalf of Lending Hearts. Uh, we'll get started in here just a minute. I think we have a few participants today. So let's just wait a few minutes for everybody to get on the call, and then we could start our class. Really excited about today. We have all of our materials. And I don't see anybody yet. So why don't we go ahead and get started? If anybody wants to join in, that's fine. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat. All the recipes will be on my website at lauraservice.com if you weren't able to join us today or watch the video. Um, so please always feel free to reach out to me. Uh, with any of your questions. So today, like I said, I'm Laura Zervis, registered dietitian, licensed nutritionist. I'm very happy to be here today to talk to you about fresh um, fruits and spring vegetables that are available right now in the spring. Um, once spring starts, you know, when we leave winter, winter, we think of the citrus fruits, maybe even things like cabbage for vegetables. Uh, those are the big ones, maybe even some of the other root vegetables like beets and carrots. But now that spring is here, so much goodness, right? And why is it such a big deal? Or why is it so important to eat fresh fruits and vegetables that are in season? So why do we want to eat fruits that are in season? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one is they're usually more cost effective. They're usually on sale. They're plentiful. So you do have that supply out there. Um, just see whatever demand does, how that um, works out. But usually um, they're a very good price. Uh, the other thing is that they're at peak freshness, so you will get the highest nutritional value out of them. They'll have the highest nutritional content, so really great time to take advantage of things when they are in season, when they're plentiful, when they're at their their peak, and that's the best time to have them. Um, you know, sometimes you see um, peaches right now, um, you see nectarines, but you're taking a chance. It's a gamble. Um, depending on where they're from, if they're here um, domestically. Um, but if you wait until summer, especially when you have some of the local ones closer to your state, that's when they're going to be at peak freshness and you could taste the difference. So um, let's get started. I'm really excited today because we're going to make several things and I'm hoping that they may be things that are new to you or new or that you haven't tried yet, maybe that you've wanted to try. Um, but just haven't had the time or, you know, sometimes when it's something that we're not used to cooking, there's a little bit of a learning curve. So maybe you put it off. So I hopefully today I'll show you some things um, that you may have not seen in a while or that you've always wanted to try. We're going to do a greens and beans dish or beans and greens, however you want to call it. And what uh, adds unique flavor to this recipe is we're going to use fennel. And here is a fennel um, bulb. This is the bulb. This is the part that we use most often in cooking. Um, some people call this anise, um, fennel or anise. They are two different products. Uh, fennel is a lot more, is more mild than its counterpart. Um, I always get the question, can I use these um, fronds? And you can. I would say that you could probably use them in soup, um, but you may want to remove them too. You may want to put them in some cheesecloth um, to get the flavor out of it and then remove it before you you serve it, uh, but they're very nice. They could also be sauteed, uh, but you're trying to render the flavor. But today we're going to use this bulb part. Uh, we're also going to make some roast asparagus. That's another spring vegetable. And after we are going to just have some plain roast asparagus, but then we're also going to make an appetizer um, asparagus tartlets. So that should be fun along with some caramelized onions, also a spring vegetable. And we also have, when looking around the room, we are also having a roasted red pepper and feta dip. Roasted red, pep uh, red peppers are also a spring vegetable. Love using those year round, but right now it's great. And they're a great price. The price on those can really fluctuate, but right now you could get some really great deals on red pepper. And you'll see these when you go into your grocery store, that's a good way to know what's in season. Right now, these things are usually right at the front of the store, right as soon as you get into that produce section. So um, that's another thing that we're gonna be making. We're also going to make a salad with arugula and um, berries, strawberries are in season right now. Arugula is in season and um, 
we'll have some feta cheese on that. And we're also going, those are the, those are the things that we're making today. And the other thing that I wanted to say about the beans and green dishes, we'll also have spinach in there. That is the green in that dish. So that is going to be our spring vegetable there. And right now um, in our state in Pennsylvania, you could already start planting these things um, like the spinach, like the arugula. They really love the cold weather. They're going to really grow really fast this time of year. Once summer comes and the heat comes out, and if they're exposed to that heat, they're just going to go to seed very quickly. Uh, so right now is a great time to grow these things if you like to do that. So I have sliced some of our funnel, but I wanted to show you how to prepare. Um, I, I actually have two bulbs for this recipe, but I'm going to do this one um, in front of you so you can see how to cut it and what to discard. So let me adjust the camera. And I will put it right there so you can see. I'm going to take my French knife and just chop these off right here and discard them. And then you're going to remove any of this. If this is brown, if any of this is brown or doesn't look good to you, I'm also going to cut up this bottom here. If this doesn't look good to you, you could always discard it. This one doesn't look too bad, but see how they just come off. You don't want to lose too much of your fennel. So I would say beer, um, just look at it and see if you see any marks. Maybe you could just cut, like if there's a little bit of brown, just cut that off like that. So anyhow, we're just going to julienne this, which is just a thin strip. And I already, like I said, already cut some fennel this morning for our class. Let's do those strips. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half because I want to show you something. There is this part right here, and I like to discard that. Um, you could see right there, it's, it's almost like the core of um, cabbage. You could do this with your French knife. You could do this with a paring. It's not very hard and woody. It's actually kind of tender, so it's not difficult to get out of there. And we'll just take that out, and then you'll see all the other leaves can come out um, nicely, easily. But we're just going to continue to julienne this. And you're going to love it. If you like greens and beans, you're really going to like not only the crunch that this adds, but the flavor that it adds to. Okay, and then I will, uh, I'm going to put that in my nice glass dish here with the handle which makes it very nice to work with. And I'm going to um, put some olive oil on here. And we're also going to do a sprinkle of kosher salt and some fresh cracked black pepper. And we'll toss it with a fork, make sure it's all coated. <clears throat> and then with this recipe too, we're also going to add um, garlic at this time. So I went ahead and sliced some garlic and I wanna show you a little um, trick for doing the garlic. <clears throat> we'll just give that a nice stir and it's ready for our pan. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just put it on like that. Let me go put this in the oven. And we are using, like I said, we're going to use spinach today for the greens. And I went ahead and I already put the spinach on because I didn't want to let it get away from me. And we put the fennel in a nice hot oven in a 400 degree oven. Just one little trick that I want to show you with the garlic um, for peeling garlic. So here we take our, this is the whole bulb and we're just going to take one clove off of here. And I'll show you how I, uh, a little gadget. This is a little, uh, I think this is latex. And we're just going to put it in there and just give it a little rub and it comes right off. How often we spend all that time trying to peel the garlic. Um, so that's a really nice little tool. I encourage you to get one. They're not very expensive. And then um, I have, a slicer. Sometimes I use a garlic press. Sometimes I just cut this on my own. But today I'm going to show you another little gadget. So if we just put the garlic right in here and there's some blades in there and I'll show you how nice this comes off. We'll just put it right
right on our, oops, sorry about that. Just show you how these slices come right off and how only one in there. So it's kind of hard to show you, but you could just see how beautiful these slices are. Very nice and thin and it makes a difference in your cooking. You'd be so surprised what a difference this makes in your cooking. Um, so again, um, all we did right now is we put, we sliced the fennel and the fennel's roasting in a 400 degree oven along with our garlic. We're gonna roast that for probably 10 to 15 minutes. And those last couple of minutes, we're going to sprinkle some Parmesan cheese on it just to, again, add a little bit of flavor. And then we're going to mix that in with our spinach. So I already have, and then also the green bean or, or Northern bean. So the one thing about fennel that you may not know is it is really high in an antioxidant called uh, quercetin. And that's a really great anti, really great natural um, anti-inflammatory. So that's one property that it has. Um, it also has um, some of the, the um, some of the properties of some of the crucif cruciferous vegetables like the broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and asparagus. So that's something that's interesting too, but really rich in that antioxidant. And of course we know that spinach is so um, high in iron. It gives us a quarter of our iron for the day, the requirement, one serving. And a serving of spinach also gives us over 400% of our vitamin K. So um, really great um, superfood. I like to call spinach, whether if you eat it raw or like we're doing today, sauteing it and having it. You could also, if you did not want spinach, um, you could also have kale in this. You could also have... Um, The other one that I was thinking of, kale is the big one that I will escarole, um, anything like that that's going to hold up. The spinach is probably going to wilt a little bit more than the other two, um, but they all make a nice, um, they all make a nice complement to this. The other thing that we are um, going to do, roast right now, and we're going to roast some, and some is also going to be in our recipe, is some asparagus. Asparagus also really rich in vitamin K and folate. It's a really good source of um, insoluble fiber. What I did was I cut the woody part of this off and you, what you do is whenever you have it on a cutting board just keep taking your knife and you'll feel you could feel how at the bottom it's almost like wood and that is not digestible so we want to make sure that we get rid of that and i have already washed this and this is nice tender i also like when it's a little bit um a little bit thicker um, but these are also nice and very tender you just want to make sure that you don't overcook these so again i'm just going to put them on our pan and just a couple. I mean, sometimes I toss this in a bowl, but just for today, we're going to put our um, olive oil and kosher salt on there. Okay, so that's two things that we have roasting in the oven for us. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is our roasted uh, red pepper and feta dip. So I went ahead and roasted our peppers and it's just like what we did with the fennel and the asparagus um you want to coat the pepper with oil and a little bit of kosher salt not too much um, and then you want to get it nice and charred on the outside because we're going to remove the skins so what you could do is there's a couple of ways you could put it in a plastic bag the skin's coming off pretty nicely or you could just peel it off and if you get a piece of skin in there it's not the end of the world or just add a little texture but um and i actually i will make these so there you go it's nice and slippery and this is also um you know maybe you might recognize these as a pimento so that's really what a pimento is that that's in our olives that the green olives that are stuffed okay so we just pull this right off and this is really easy we're just going to pulse this all together you know, and again, our red pepper, really high in antioxidant, has great anti-inflammatory properties. So there we go, that's all peeled. And um, vitamins A, vit we know vitamin A, right? Because of the color, vitamin C. It gives us um, one half of our vitamin C for the day, um, actually one half of our vitamin A for the day and 150% of our vitamin C. So really um, a powerful, powerful antioxidant. So what we're going to do is let me move my things over for you. 
and we'll get out our food processor. Such a great tool um, to make things easy when you want, especially like when you're making a dip like this. Yes, the food processor can really chop things up for us, but also when we're making our dip, can really smooth and whip things up very nicely. So we have, um, I would, we're going to use eight ounces of feta. And I have a block here that I've already measured. And I'm going to just put it in smaller pieces. I'm not gonna put this whole block in there in one solid piece. I'm gonna break it up just a little. You could cut it with, your, with a knife. You could just take it with your hands too. That we're basically going to pulse all of these ingredients together. And the same with our pepper, I'm going to go ahead and instead of putting the whole thing together, putting the whole um, pepper in there, I'm going to cut it into some chunks. And I'm going to add a quarter cup of olive oil and just a tablespoon of lemon juice. We're going to pulse that all together. Just use the pulse function to begin with. Get everything together, and then you can go ahead and kind of smooth it in. Now you can leave it chunky if you like to. And I'm just going to scrape my sides down with a spatula to get, you know, some of this. I don't want to lose any of this beautiful feta that's in there. Oh, so good. Okay, so there's some other, there's some variations here too. Also, you could also add like um, some green chilies or some spicy yellow peppers. If you want more spice, you could always add red pepper flakes. Those are really great additions. Um, also, uh, if you've been following, we've also made, we took those same roasted peppers and we added them to chickpeas and tahini and olive oil and lemon juice. And we made that nice roasted red pepper hummus. That's also delicious. But this is just another dip too to have, um, since we haven't made this one before, I thought you might like it. But really nice to serve. Um, you could serve it with crackers, you could serve it with pita chips, pita bread. Um, you could dip vegetables into it too, which is um, what I like to do for my family. You could dip raw carrots, um, more peppers, whatever you like. And sometimes when I'm serving it, I may put like a little drizzle of olive oil on top. Let me move my food processor over. It's not in the way. And I always try to find a nice decorative bowl. Today I just have this glass bowl for you. But this has a real nice consistency. And again, it's okay if you have, you know, a little chunk of um, pepper or a little piece of feta, but it's nice when it's um, you know, homogenous for, for lack of a better word, and it's all mixed through. But you could see the speckles of some of the darkness from the pepper where it was roasted. Um, and you could always add a little bit of, I usually don't, but you can add salt and pepper if you need to. So there is our roasted red pepper dip. And again, sometimes I might drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top. Maybe even a little bit of parsley would be nice, top parsley. And that makes an excellent um, appetizer. So let me set this aside and we could start with our, um, let me just check on our fennel real quickly and our asparagus. And I could really smell the garlic. And let me show you um, also what I have done with the spinach already. So the other reason I did the spinach early is that we, I had about two pounds of spinach. So the lid was actually um, coming off of the skillet. Um, so I had to keep working with it and I didn't want to have my back towards you the whole time. So it really cooks down, but this is what it looks like. And again, just a, I try to put just a teaspoon, maybe two teaspoons of olive oil in here. And um, I put the lid on so it could steam. And then you could see 
um, a little bit here where it may have caught, but not too bad. And, and actually this will give it some flavor. We'll just stir it up in there, but we're going to add our great Northern beans to this. And our, our beans, they're an excellent source of fiber. There's seven grams of fiber um, in each serving of beans and a serving of those beans are a third of a cup. So that's really fantastic. And they're also a very low glycemic food, which means it does not have um, the effect of, on our blood sugar as, um, as simple carbs would. So it, it's also a great, um, it's also a great um, low glycemic food. So we're just going to put this back on our stove. And then as soon as, um, as soon as the fennel comes out, we'll mix this all together. So let me just set this behind here. Okay, uh, the next thing that we're going to make is our tartlets. So we'll get them all ready and we will put them in the oven while the beans and once the, um, uh, the fennel and the asparagus comes out, but let me go and grab this, our other prep that we had from today. Let me just move this over. And then I still keep an eye on the um, on the fennel because we're going to put um, we're going to put Parmesan cheese on when it gets close to the end of cooking. So the next thing that we're going to do is our tartlets. And what I did was I buy a pre-made tartlet shell, and I just took them out of the freezer. You don't have to. You could use them frozen, or you could defrost them a little bit. It depends what you're doing since we're baking ours. Um, I just took them out right before class started. They come in this nice little tray here. And the nutrition on these is not too bad either. So what we're going to do is let me get my, I have a pan lined with parchment paper. And we have our tartlets and we have all of our fillings. So what I did was before class started is I went ahead and I caramelized some onions. And the reason I did that is it takes probably a good 30 to 40 minutes of constant attention. So I didn't want to do that during class. But if you've ever caramelized onions, the best thing to do is just to um, just put some olive oil. You could use a little butter if you like, in addition to the olive oil. And on low, just keep stirring them and stirring them and allow them to get brown. We're not, they're not black. They're not burnt by any means. They're just nice and brown. And if you were to taste them right now, they are, they're very sweet. Um, some people like to add sugar to them. I don't like to, I mean, if, if, if you did, it would make the process go a little quicker, but I don't like to do the added sugar. There's also um, sometimes people add a little balsamic vinegar, depends what I'm making. I usually just like to do the onions alone. And this, this fragrance really fills up your kitchen and your house. So let's, uh, first we're going to, let me move the camera so you could see what I'm doing here. We have our pan and we're just going to put our tartlets on them. And we're just going to make a few of these. And I have two different kinds that we're going to make. One is asparagus. Now on the recipe that I gave you that's on my website, we saute the asparagus um, with some olive oil and some garlic. Today I went ahead and I roasted some. So you could also uh, try roasting it. I just wanted to show you both ways that it should be done. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of um, gray air cheese. And just a little bit in the bottom. And you don't need much, you see how tiny these are. But they're just really nice bite-sized snacks, really make a nice appetizer. Let's see, I do half of them with this filling and then we have another filling that we're going to do. Just make sure that they have a little bit in there. All right, next we're going to um, put in a little bit of our 
Islands. Give it such a great taste. This is another. Um, I love this topping and the other one that we're going to do this morning with, um, whoops, with the tartlets that went right out of there. These are our tartlets, but I've also had a pizza, um, a pizza topped with caramelized onions, gray air cheese, and um, also the, the other filling that we're going to make here also makes a great pizza, which I will show you, should be. And then we're just going to put, we just have some asparagus. And just put a few on top. These could even be a little smaller than what I have them. I just put little one inch pieces. But it's just enough. You get just a little bite of everything, a little bit of the onion, a little bit of the asparagus. Um, gray air gets nice and creamy when, you, when it gets melted. And this makes a fun appetizer. <clears throat> okay. And then for the other ones, we're going to do a little bit differently. <laughs> Excuse me. We're going to add uh, mozzarella. So just for something different, it, it's, it's going to look nice to have two different kinds on your appetizer tray. You could also look, you could imagine too, if you were to use the roasted red pepper that we had um, for a part of this too. So you have some different colors on here. My other topping is also red. This. Okay. And then we're going to put more caramelized onions on them. Now the last topping for this one is arugula. And we're going to um, put the arugula on after it comes out of the oven. But like I said, this also makes for a really nice pizza topping. Um, or a flatbread topping, the caramelized onions, arugula, or the caramelized onions and asparagus. Okay, so these are ready to go in the oven. Let me check on our fennel to see how that's coming. And then we could also put these in the oven too. Okay. And this is what our fennel looks like right now. So not brown yet, but I believe it's tender. So let's give it a little, another couple minutes. And you could smell that uh, almost like a licorice scent comes off of it. But this one is, like I said, is not as strong as anise but it'll still give us a nice flavor. And don't, don't be afraid, it's not going to taste, your beans and greens aren't gonna taste like licorice greens and beans. It's, it's very mild, but just stirring it up like they're um, really agitating it and getting that smell, um, that scent actually up here. So let me just put this back in here and we'll wait a few minutes on those. These are ready good to go in the oven. So I'm just gonna set them aside. And we will start with our salad. So we have our main dish. We have a meatless main with the um, beans and greens. We have our appetizer and we have some dip. So we actually have two appetizers and we're also going to make a nice salad today. So let's first of all, let's get our prep for that. I always like to get a nice serving bowl for you so you could see what it looks like. And today we're going to use arugula. And arugula is wonderful. And, and you, um, you either like the scent of arugula or you don't. It has such a bite. It's also called rocket. So if you're ever or um, if you're ever at a restaurant, you see it says fresh rocket. Um, you'll be it'll be actually arugula. Um, really nice. And this is baby arugula that I'm using. And if you look on my website. Um, I have a picture of arugula from my garden and it's as big as my hand. So it does get bigger. This is small and tender. Even when it gets bigger, it could still be tender. But again, it likes to grow in this cold weather um, and it, it'll really flourish right now. 
Okay, again, another thing that's just loaded with our B vitamins, folate and um, vitamin K. So just a great food. And we're going to add our strawberries. And we're just going to slice them up. A couple slices here. And really this salad, I love this. My family loves this one. It's, uh, we make this a lot in the winter time, but as soon as the berries are fresh, we make it even more often. And it goes really well with the arugula. And it also goes well, you could put any type of cheese that you want on it. You could add a, either a pecan or an almond to it. And then I also like to add blackberries and even mandarin oranges. I think they make a, a really nice. And uh, you could also add red onion. I get my mandarin. And these are great. They just peel so nicely and quickly. Don't want to do them too soon. They could get a little dry um, and just peel off the sections. Pull out the, the inner pith there. That could be bitter. And so we have all of our fruit in there and let's go ahead and make our dressing. Okay, so let me just set the rest of our strawberries aside. And I always like to, to make homemade dressings. I think it's, you know, they're lower in um, sodium, they're lower in sugar. You know what, exactly what's in it. If you have anybody at home with allergies, it's a great way to um, to make sure that they're okay. But the other thing is that um, you know what's in it. Uh, you, and it stays fresh and it's cost effective. That's what I was thinking too. So what I like to do is I, I prepped all this before and I like to use, um, we're using some nice um, balsamic vinegar today. I think balsamic vinegar is great whenever you have fruit in your salad. There's some salads that I think just call for certain dressings and uh, I think balsamic goes great on this one. And we have some fresh garlic and we have our oil. Now I like to say, some glass jars for um, just this occasion. And then you could put it in a glass jar and then you know date it and keep it refrigerated and it should last in your refrigerator for a week, sometimes even longer, but just give it a look. If you have things like, um, we're gonna be putting basil and garlic in today that are fresh. If you have some of those fresh things that must be refrigerated because it would go moldy if it, was, if it were to sit out on your counter. So that's just something to keep in mind. So um, the, when we've made some other dressings in our class, we have made um, one that went on a tuna dish that we did that was equal parts olive oil and lemon. Um, when we're using um, apple cider vinegar, it's three parts olive oil and two parts of vinegar. For a balsamic vinaigrette, it is um, three parts olive oil, one part vinegar. So I have used um, six tablespoons of olive oil and two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. So let's go ahead and put that in there. And we have our vinegar. You could also do this in a bowl and whisk it, but I figure why not just put it in here, shake it up, it's in my um, container already and then I have it. And then I also like to use a fresh clove of garlic. You can use powdered garlic flour. That it took the lid off the garlic and you can really smell it. Um, you can use um, garlic powder if you like. Um, just make sure I wouldn't use as much as this. I would probably use a quarter teaspoon for this amount that I'm making because that um, garlic is, a, uh, the powder is a lot more concentrated. So before I um, cut our basil, let me just go check on the um, the fennel and the garlic, and I'm going to add the Parmesan to that and let it go just another minute. And that's all we need for that. Okay, and our asparagus is that our asparagus really didn't need that much time because it, it was so um, skinny, if you remember, just the, the diameter is not that big of a stock. So let's take that off of there. Again, just um, olive oil and kosher salt, a little bit of pepper. 
you can put something, you could put balsamic glaze on this. I like just leaving it just like as it is. Doesn't need much time, especially when it's this thin. There's our roast asparagus. You know, if you wanna, if you're having a brunch, you could always do a nice little hollandaise on this. But again, this is nice and simple. And um, that's when you could really, I hate to mask the taste of my vegetables. So I usually just keep them simple. Same as fish, I just like it simple. And um, that's when you could actually taste the fish. I'm not trying to mask it. So I'm really trying to let those um, compounds come out of the asparagus. Um, so just again, just gently roast it. I'll just set that over here. Okay, so I'll leave the um, screen like that so you could see what I'm doing next with the basil. And I have a nice little basil plant right here. So I'm gonna show you a few things about this. And if you happen to grow basil in a garden or a plant um, or a planter in the summertime, a few things to remember. If you, when you're going to harvest this, you just don't want to cut down here and, um, and just take this and just lop it right off, right? We want to be very careful. Basil is so sensitive. It doesn't like cold weather. It doesn't like water. It doesn't like for its leaves to be wet. It doesn't like for it to touch its leaves. So you just want to be very, uh, treat it with uh, delicate hands. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you first how to harvest it. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to make it today. So if I was going to harvest this in my garden, I would, if you want to look at this, let me find a good example. This one's a good example right here. So I would take my scissors and I would come down. I would come down this stem right here and take it off right there. See, so I'm leaving this other stem. And if I'm going to take it on this stem, I'm going to go right down to there, take that off. So you see, I'm not just chopping this off. I'm taking it down to where there's like a little intersection for lack of a better word, where the next one is. And that will keep your basil growing all summer long. Just like that. Do you see the difference of what I'm doing? So we're just going to that next joint, cutting off. So look, looks like a baby basil plant, but this will just keep getting bushy and keep doing that. And it's gonna keep growing. And then you're just gonna go to the next joint. And you can see how there isn't one right now, but there will be but this will just stay for you really nice all summer long. Sometimes people say, well, I only got one cutting out of my basil. Well, you're harvesting it the wrong way. So if you're harvesting it the correct way, it should last you all summer. So that's something to look at there. Um, yeah, and basil is such a great, um, you know, it's a really great antioxidant, has great anti-inflammatory properties. Um, you could use it in so many things. You see it in the caprese salad with the buffalo mozzarella and fresh tomatoes. That's a great one for the summer. I've also seen this um, as a garnish in some drinks. Um, you know, of course, in any um, tomato sauce that we're making, basil is, is usually the star of the show. Um, today, we're going to put it in our salad. So I'm going to just keep the screen down because I want to show you how we're going to um, cut the basil. And now we want to discard these stems. But before, we just didn't want to take off all the good stuff or lop it off at the bottom. So I'm going to get rid of those stems. And I'm going to do what's called a chiffonade. So a chiffonade is a ribbon-like cut that you could do with leafy vegetables. It could be done with spinach. It could be done with romaine. It could be done with any of the leafy lettuces, anything like that. And it's just you roll it up like a cigar. Nice, tight little thing. And we get our... French knife, mine has a little bit of garlic on it. And we're just going to do nice, see the nice little ribbon cut? That's called a chiffonade, just like that. And we're gonna add that right to our dressing. And you know what else I'm gonna do? Just take a few more and I'm gonna add it right into our lettuce mix. I don't be afraid to add, you know, sometimes people are like, well, I don't have this certain herb in my, um, in the recipe that it calls for, but you could always add dill, basil, oregano, um, trying to, I'm at a loss right now, parsley, cilantro. You could always add that to your fresh lettuce mix. Just, it just gives it such a burst of flavor. And when your guests are eating, they're gonna be like, what is that taste? What, what am I getting out of that? So again, just such a great, um, such a great herb. So many great qualities, so many things you could do with it. So anyhow, I just put that all together. Give it a shake, 
And again, you could put this in a bowl and use a, a stainless steel bowl and use a wire whisk and achieve the same results. But, um, and you see how it emulsifies here. I don't want to, I'm not gonna dress my salad right now because I don't have anybody here to eat it and I don't want to get wilted, but you could just see how it emulsifies real nice together. See that, how beautiful that is. So, um, a great way. And then I also, I should tell you, I also, put in just a pinch, just a tiny pinch of salt. And always, 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 always with balsamic, always fresh um, cracked pepper. It's just a must. And this, mm, oh, this is so nice. You're gonna love this. Um, so again, I would dress this with, um, I would also add, um, we could add some of our feta to it. We could add blue cheese, your almond, cashew not a cashew probably an almond or a pecan slivered almonds would be a great addition to this as well and uh blue cheese or feta cheese and then our wonderful dressing it's so good another one that i like to do with the balsamic dressing is arugula or some type of spring mix uh, roasted red peppers and blue cheese that's another one that goes fantastic with the balsamic dressing so let me set this aside i'm sure that our our um, pedal is on. It is. So I'm going to take that out and I'm going to put our tartlets in. I don't want, didn't want to put them in the oven just a little bit hotter for the vegetables. And our tartlets aren't going to take that much time. So let's assemble this together. So panel down and let me discard that our basil so we don't get it dirty okay so for the beans and greens okay I'll just show you how beautiful we just have right now it's just the um, beans and greens and some people would stop it there you could add a tomato product you could add tomato paste cook the tomato paste with maybe some garlic before we do this, and then add the beans and greens, saute your spinach and add the beans. You could also add a little bit of chicken broth if you like. Um, we're going to do this. Um, it actually adds so much flavor and we're also uh, watching the fat content, right? Because we don't, not that the tomatoes would be a bad choice, that would be excellent, but we wouldn't want to add um, a lot of butter or we noticed all we did was a little bit of olive oil for our spinach and a little bit of olive oil on our fennel. So, so far we still have a nice heart healthy meal. So, and just a sprinkle, like I said, just a quarter cup of cheese. So we're going to take this and you could see how the Parmesan cheese is on our pan and we're just gonna scrape all that off, all that goodness, all those crusty. And when it gets in with our beans and greens, it's going to get nice and soft. And now we'll just give this a stir. Nice. nice this looks. So you're getting a lot more than just, and this, like I said, this was um, two pounds of spinach, believe it or not. You could always add more spinach if you like, uh, depending on your taste. But this way, at least, you know, a serving, everybody will get a little bit of spinach. Just probably have to pull it out a little bit, but this fennel just just makes such a nice colorful dish and it's just so varied. You have the soft buttery texture of the beans, you have the crisp of the fennel, and then um, you know our spinach is nice and soft. This doesn't need anything else. If you want, you could put a tiny bit of salt and I would probably do the fresh pepper, but um, it's really good just the way it is. Uh, the aroma on this is fantastic. So there is our greens and bean dish. Again, that's on the website. It turns out great every time. It's a real meal pleaser. If this, like I mentioned, this could be a nice meatless main, but it could also be a great side dish as well. So let me just set this back over on the stove and while we wait for those tarts, we could just talk about, um, let's see, 
Uh, we'll talk about everything that we use today. Back up here so you could see me. So we had our roasted um, red pepper and feta dip, and you could put um, feta, you could dip in there carrots, uh, peppers, um, pita chips, pita bread. It makes a nice addition um, to to your um, to your evening if you're hosting a small party. That would be a great addition to that. You could put your pita chips around it, and then we also have our tartlets. We have two different kind of tartlets that are coming out, and we still have to finish the one. It has, doesn't have all the ingredients on it yet. And we have our beans and greens, and we also have our roasted asparagus, and we have our salad. So kind of have it all covered today, which is kind of exciting. And don't forget, you know, when, when you're using fresh like this, uh, we could have used frozen spinach, but I think you'll notice that the, um, the fresh has such a, a better taste to it, and we are getting it you know, with the, the maximum nutrition, nutritional value when you get it fresh. So that's why I always encourage you to choose fresh over frozen or canned. Not that the other ones aren't good substitutes, but if it's in season, it's a great time to take advantage of it. So let me go pull out our tartlets and see how they're doing. Just a minute left on those. And basically, the, we're just waiting for the, um, oh, they're nice and hot, just waiting for that cheese to melt. Oh. So these look really nice. And we're just going to um, put some fresh arugula and I'm just going to chop that up a little bit. Again, use our chiffonade. And again, these stems, when it's when it's so young like this, these stems are, are very tender too. So you don't have to worry about discarding the stems. And we'll just put like a little, little piece on each part. Get out the serving dish. There's my timer. Let me shut that off. Makes a nice little, and like I said, you could also do this with red peppers and asparagus, and you could see how nice the cheese is melted. So that makes a nice little plate. So we'll get everything lined up here and let me just see if there's any questions that we need to answer. Just checking the chat so far, no questions. Okay, so um, again, we have our red pepper and feta dip, which you could also use with chickpeas instead. We have our appetizer here, which was lovely. We have our salad and we have the greens and beans with the fennel, um, all nice, really great choices. Um, what else do we think? So asparagus and red peppers and berries, you might not see at the beginning of spring. Um, ours probably what we have here is probably coming um, probably from California or Florida. And then you'll start seeing them coming, you know, it'll start moving up a little bit, up the, get a little bit further north. And around May, you will see a lot of local strawberries here, which, and they'll be so bursting with flavor and really delicious. Um, and then the other berries will come in well. And again, always asparagus, uh, red peppers, um, the green leafy, the dark green leafy. They really like the cold, the, the cold weather with spring. You know, it's not getting super hot like it is in the summertime. Once that comes, they're really um, shy away. You could still grow them, but you have to be careful where they're at. They probably need a shady day. Um, so again, all the 
recipes are on the website. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, everything that we used today was really high in fiber, antioxidants, anti-inflammatories, um, so many compounds in the asparagus, um, just really good sources of, of folate, vitamin C, vitamin A, um, and vitamin K. So really a great um, selection today. So again, make sure that, you know, for fruits and vegetables, you want to make sure that you're getting five servings a day. And what is a serving? A serving of asparagus, probably a half cup, or I would say six to eight spears. Um, arugula is like lettuce, you know, two cups is probably a good size. Our strawberries. Um, that's funny. Some of the um, other fruits might be a half cup as a serving, but for strawberries, blackberries, um, even watermelon, the serving is closer to a one and a quarter cups. Um, a serving for red pepper would be a half of a red pepper. And a serving size, what else did we have today? Our spinach, probably two cups. Fennel would be a half cup. And our beans, don't forget the starchy bean family, like corn, peas, beans, those are all one third cup is the serving size. Not that you can't have more, but if you're trying to keep track, you know, sometimes it's a good idea at dinner, at lunchtime, before dinner, because sometimes at dinner, it's too late. At lunchtime, you could think to yourself, okay, how many servings have I had all day? You know, maybe you made a vegetarian omelet for breakfast. Maybe you got a serving of vegetables there. Maybe you had a salad at lunch with some, you know, two cups of any type of mixed green, and then maybe an assortment of cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, and onions. So you get another serving there. So um, at dinner time, you, you know, maybe at, at lunch, okay, how many more do I need? So you have to make a conscious effort to get two more. Well, I know I'm gonna have, um, after dinner, I'm going to have berries for a snack. So I just need to get one at dinner. So try to make that. And even with um, our children, you know, they need to get that five a day plus. So trying to check in, you know, sometimes, um, you know, you're hard pressed, like even the weekends, like if we're not eating at home and maybe we're out of our routine, that vegetable and fruit count could be a little bit lower. Or if we're away on vacation, sometimes it could be a little bit lower in fruit. Maybe you're getting the vegetables at, at um, lunch and dinner, but maybe you don't have that fruit count. And you always want to get it from fresh fruit versus a juice um, or versus a supplement, right? There's nothing like the, uh, we're missing out on the fiber if we opt to go with a juice. Um, and sometimes we're adding other things when we go with canned instead of fresh. So if we're going, even if it's canned peaches, even if it's in their own juice, you're still going to have more sugar in that serving than you would in just a regular peach or a regular nectarine. And you're not getting all that wonderful fiber and other nutrients that could be found in the skin. So it's a really good practice to always eat the fresh fruits and vegetables. Now in the middle of winter, when there, you don't have all of the options, certainly canned is okay, frozen's okay. But um, the big thing is to try to get things while they're in season. You know, And then when we have summer coming up, you'll see more of the zucchini, the tomatoes, the cucumbers, the other peppers are gonna start to come in. Um, those are good things, the peaches. Um, peaches, nectarines, all those good things, the melon family, the berry family, all those will start to come in. And then when you get into fall, apples, pears, some of the root vegetables will start to be more available. So just trying to keep mindful of what's there. And, and like I said, you'll usually know when you're in the grocery store, because that's what's going to be highlighted in the produce section as soon as you walk in. Or the right now, if you, if you were to go to your grocery store um, in our area, I'm sure you would see red peppers, asparagus, some of these other things, the fennel, and all of the greens, um, you know, that we have discussed here today, um, highlighted because that's, you know, that's when it's the time to get them. Um, so we've talked about the number of servings. We talked about all the health benefits of everything we ate today. We looked at a kind of cool gadget for our garlic. Uh, it's a two, two step system. One is to get that skin off and the other slices it really nice. And you'll find when you, um, today as today, when we were roasting the fennel in the oven, when it has that really thin slice like that, it is so fragrant and it fragrant and it really adds to the dish. So I highly encourage you to do that, um, especially you know sometimes uh, depending on our knife skills, you know it's easier to do that gadget versus trying to. You need a very sharp knife. You need to make sure um, that your eyes are good and that you can see trying to make those small slices. This is a razor thin slice and um, it really gets the most out of your garlic. And then the other side benefit too is you're not biting into a big chunk of garlic 
um, when you're eating something. You're just getting that nice thin sliver, which is usually when you roast it like that gets very sweet. And don't forget um, our caramelized onions, how sweet they got and nice and brown. And I think I have some more left over here. You know, spring onions and spring leeks too are also um, a really good thing that comes in the spring. And I also have that on my website. We've made that before, so I didn't want to make that today. But don't forget about the um, broccoli, um, the baked potato and leek soup. Um, that's really nice. Remember, we use baked potatoes and we use fresh leeks and we saute them. That gives, um, you know, it's really fun to experiment with things like leeks and the fennel and things, you know, just different smells, different textures. Um, of course, they're all gonna have different compounds that are good for us, but it's really fun to try some of these things. And I encourage you to, you know, sometimes in practice, I see a lot of clients that just stick to the basics, broccoli and cauliflower. Is that good? Yes, it's good. But the more fiber and the more diverse um, foods that we feed our gut and the more fiber we're feeding our gut, um, and we're making it, you know, building up that immune system and doing so many positive things for it. Um, it's a good idea to get a variety. So, you know, trying, we were talking about trying to eat the rainbow. We had red today. We have um, green. Uh, we had, what other color did we have? Orange from our orange. We had another red in the strawberry. We have white. Um, so it's good to try to get all the colors of, of a rainbow, you know, when you're selecting your fruits and vegetables. So think that too, how am I getting, how many am I getting per day? What color am I getting? How could I change that up a little bit? And, uh, you know, how could I, you know, make, how could I improve tomorrow? Because we could always, um, you know, it's a process, right? Maybe we cannot start by eating five servings of fruits and vegetables, right? Uh, you know, the very first time you start to try to increase your fruit and vegetable intake, it's a process. So, you know, keep, that's why it's a good idea to, to check with yourself at breakfast. Okay, I've got one in, I've got half a banana, half a banana counts as one, or I put a cup of berries in, in um, my cereal or my oatmeal, or, you know, I put a cup of spinach in my smoothie. All of those are great ways to, to get that in there. Okay, so then lunch, you know, what am I going to do there? dinner and then a snack. If I wanted to have a snack later in the evening, you know, that could be a fruit or vegetable as well. Our snacks, you know, we could always add, and this is nice because we have a vegetable in our snack. Um, so, and if we add a vegetable to dip into it, uh, the carrot sticks or the celery, the, which would be a great addition to that, you're getting even more. So just a great idea to, um, when you're trying to improve that fruit and vegetable intake, just some steps that you could take. So again, uh, let me know if you have any questions. If you weren't able to join me today, I'm always available. Um, if you reach out to me by email, I will always get back to you. And um, all the recipes are on the website. If you have any questions, please let me know. Have a wonderful day. And remember to eat your fruits and vegetables when they're in season. Thank you so much and have a great day.